for the last few weeks, we have been hearing that the Knicks are looking to make a massive trade for either a center or a backup center. Now, as the weeks have gone by, the Knicks have not been able to pull off that trade. Not only that, but they have shifted their trade targets a number of times to different people. Now, it happened to start with Walker Kessler, then it went to Jalen Duran, then it went to Alfred Sengun, and a couple of other names. And now, we have no other names to speak about because even though the Knicks are looking to make a trade, they are still unable to do so. And many fans have been asking the question, why? What's the biggest reason or the biggest issue causing the Knicks not to be able to pull off a trade? Well, thanks to an NBA executive, he helped break down exactly why the Knicks are having obstacles in making a trade for a backup center. We're going to talk about all of those reports and so much more today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and make sure you have notifications turned on. So you don't miss a second of the new content. And now, let's get started. The Knicks are dealing with a massive obstacle in a trade for a center. As I said to start off the show, for the last few weeks, the Knicks have been attempting to trade for a center. And that's because when you look at the free agency market, there are no centers available there. So the Knicks can't go there to sign a center. They have to trade for one now if they want a backup. And it's clear. Mitchell Robinson, his injury history. Jericho Sims, how young, how inexperienced he is. It's giving the Knicks a lot of concerns. And because of that, they are continuing to look for a center they can trade for. But again, they have been running into obstacles. They have not been able to pull off that move. And the main reason why? Well, thanks to an NBA executive, he helped reveal that it's because of the Knicks picks that they're including in these trades. Their picks, unfortunately, are just not good enough. Let's go ahead and break this down today. So according to an NBA executive, he states the following. Absolutely, they should, he's talking about the Knicks, should offer all they can for a center that is perfect for Tom Thibodeau. And of course, the problem is, according to this NBA executive, is that the draft capital that they have is very bad. The Pistons would definitely want two picks for Jalen Duran, for instance, if they were looking to trade for him. But the thing with the picks are that the Knicks have left is you can't really say that they're going to be first rounders. They're not as valuable as they might look. So again, according to this NBA executive, the main obstacle for the Knicks in terms of making a trade for a backup center has to do with their trade assets, most specifically their draft picks. They have two protected picks that they can include in any trade. I believe a 2026 uh, six pick swap, so they can include that in a trade as well too. But again, 2026 trade swap. The Knicks are going to be a very good team next year. That's not really desirable as well, too. So when you consider all of that, that seems to be the main reason why the Knicks have been shifting trade targets and still, to this day, unable to pull off a trade for a backup center. But let's continue here with these reports. According to the NBA uh, Insider and, of course, the Heavy.com, they state the following. The two picks the Knicks still have are protected. They have Washington's picks, which is in 2025, but it's protected picks one through 10 next year. The Wizards are almost certain to be among the 10 worst teams in the league. The Knicks would get Washington's pick in 2026, but that is protected for the top eight. Again, Washington is likely to be among the eight worst teams that year too. After that, that pick converts to two second round picks. The fact that that's the case, think about it if you're another team and you want to give up a backup center that you think is a very good piece, but you're getting something back. Are you going to be okay with getting a pick like that that may never convey, and when it does, it's second-round picks, and you just gave up a player that you really like? Is that something that, you're, that you are okay with, that you're happy giving up? A lot of teams, maybe not so, and that's the Washington pick that's protected. Now we're going to go to the next pick, which, of course, it's still protected. It's a similar story with the Detroit 2025 pick. The Knicks will only get it if the Pistons are not in the top 13 of the draft in 2025, which is unlikely. It's top 11 in 2026 and top 9 in 2027. There is a good chance that that pick will convert in one of those years, but if not, it becomes a second rounder. So again, more risk. If you're another team and you're looking to trade with the Knicks, and yeah, the Knicks can give you a Jericho Sims. Yes, they can give you a Preston Achua sign and trade. Maybe they don't want to include Deuce McBride. 
But then you have to include those picks. What team is going to want Sims, Precious, and two of these protected picks? Both of them may not convey and turn into second round picks for somebody that they consider a very good piece. Because if we're looking to trade with the Pistons, for instance, and we're going after Duran or Isaiah Stewart, one of those guys they're going to want legitimate picks back for because they like those guys. They're young pieces and they could help another team if they were over there. But you have to make the price make sense. The Knicks right now cannot get that done. And that's why they have been shifting trade targets each and every week. We started out with Walker Kessler. We moved on to Jalen Duran. Then we were at Alfred Sengun. Then we were at Nick Richards. Then it was, then it was a high veteran uh, center that made a lot of money. Then it was one of those guys. And then after that, it was Clint Capella. Then after that, now we're still looking for the next particular trade target the Knicks are going to go after. Or if they're going to circle back and go after one of their older trade targets that they were looking at to start this offseason. We're not too sure yet. But either way, the Knicks are still looking for a center that they can back up Mitchell Robinson with. And they're doing so by looking at the trade market. Because if they wanted to sign a Chua, they would have done so already. If they wanted to get another potential center, who are going to break down? Because there is a free agent center that is available right now that many people aren't talking about. We're going to get to him later on in the show. The Knicks could potentially go after him. They have options, but it's clear. If they wanted to go the free agency route, they would have done that. They didn't. They're continuously looking at the trade market because they know like we all know. Right now is our window to win. And while we could roll the dice with Precious, we could roll the dice with one of these maybe okay free agent centers that remain. But in reality, the way to get better and stay good is to get a young center that can play backup minutes, but can also start, can also play starter minutes in case Mitchell Robinson goes down with injury. That's what you need if you're the Knicks right now. And that's what they're searching for. But as long as they have these issues with these picks, they're likely not going to get that young center. That's why they're looking at high salary veteran centers around the league, maybe on a one year deal that's left from it from them for their contract, because maybe their cost is going to be relatively low. They can get them on this team and at least for a year, see what they can do with that roster. And then at the trade deadline or maybe in the next offseason, you try to address the center situation again. But it's coming down to a point where the Knicks have to make a decision. They need to decide on what they're going to do here. Are they going to go after a free agent, go with Precious Achua? Are they going to do a sign and trade for another center on the market that's available via trade? They're going to have to make a decision because going into training camp, we cannot have any questions. We need to know our full roster, our full core, the core that's going to be playing significant minutes on that court each and every game. We're going to need to know that roster backwards and forwards because we're going to need to gain that chemistry in order to make sure that we can be that legit threat that legit contender in the league moving forward. If you enjoyed these clips from the live show, be sure to subscribe to the channel and have notifications turned on so you don't miss any new episodes or when we go live. Thanks for watching, Nick fans. And until next time, peace.